new evidence that Apple's testing a visual intelligence control center widget, along with an updated bottom bar design in the music app and updated queuing features in the music app. A first hands-on look at debug mode for visual intelligence, along with the debug option to edit the prompt sent to ChatGPT. This is iOS Decoded. So it appears that Apple is testing a new fluid transition in regular navigation controllers. So for instance, in the settings app, this is how things work normally. You can only swipe from the left edge to go back like this, but the updated fluid navigation that Apple appears to be testing changes things a little bit. And one of the coolest features is that you can swipe back from anywhere like this. So not just from the left edge of the screen. So you could probably think about why that could be handy. For instance, think about when you're holding your phone in your left hand and you swipe back, that's easy because your thumb's right there at the left side, but with the right hand grip with this new animation, it's also just as easy when holding your phone in your right hand. By the way, if you appreciate videos like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button for more. Apple's testing a feature that will allow you to invoke focus modes using the ring silent switch toggle that's found on older iPhone hardware. So Apple's looking into a new all apps, or should I say all games button for the Apple Arcade tab in the App Store. Now you can already access your list of all games and coming soon games in several places within the Arcade tab. And there you can go in and filter all the, the list if you wanna do that. You can also scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll find an all games button there. So see all games, just like that. But Apple wants to make it even easier to find all of your games. So wouldn't it be nice if there was a button here in the upper right hand corner. Well, that's what they're currently testing as you can see right here. So this is the all games button. And now you simply tap that right next to your user button. And that allows you to access all games. Very subtle change, no doubt. So Apple's testing a feature where when a user holds their iPhone 16 in the camera pose mode with the camera control button in the upper right hand corner, then the camera will automatically show. Also in testing is a feature that activates when game mode is active. So when you're in game mode, Apple will make the sensitivity of the camera control button less sensitive to prevent accidental activations. Now, right now, when game mode is active, then the camera control button is unavailable. Now this one could be a biggie because Apple's testing a visual intelligence control center shortcut, as you can see right here. This is the inactive state We'll show you the active state here in just a second. So this of course means being able to launch visual intelligence without using the camera control button. Does that mean that visual intelligence would come to other devices besides the iPhone 16? That's still yet to be determined. Here's hoping we'll at least see visual intelligence on the iPhone 15 pro perhaps. Now nine to five Mac has also gained access to the visual intelligence debug mode. As you can see there, the little gear icon, so here it is. This is the visual intelligence debug mode with all the various sections there. You see the viewfinder below that you have camera operations, you have logging, onboarding, stuff related to chat GPT, et cetera. Uh, so this is a really cool little section to kind of experiment and see what visual intelligence is seen because just to the end user, it looks like nothing's going on when you hold something in front of the viewfinder when visual intelligence is active, but we know that is not the case. Actually, there's a lot going on there and you can kind of see that when you enable some of these debug functions. So let's just enable these two. And now you can see what visual intelligence is actually picking up. You can see it's recognizing this object, a, a book. You can see it's recognizing the various text within that frame as well. And if you want even more fine grained detail over what it's actually seen, then you can adjust the subject eligibility to allow all, and that will kind of spell out everything that's being sh shown within the viewfinder. You can see the various texts, the object type, etc. Pretty cool. Even the amount of accuracy predicted there. So really cool stuff. There's of course, other things, other features within this debug mode. For instance, you have a show record button. So you can actually, well, it actually doesn't work, but uh, there's a record function in there as well. And it's, it's just really interesting to go in and play with some of these debug features. Speaking of which, 
There's also a debug option to edit the chat GPT prompt. So the prompt that's actually sent to chat GPT that sets up the various restrictions and guidelines for the responses. Yeah, there's a debug for that as well. And you can kind of see Apple's thinking here as far as how they want the response to be tailored. So they basically set out all these parameters to mold the responses to fit their requirements. So you can see Apple's pretty heavy handed with how they want this to be presented, which to be honest, this is probably the least surprising thing that you'll hear all day. But you can see things like prohibited phrases that they have, how they would like the responses to be concise, provide interesting insights, using neutral language, avoid subject descriptions, ensuring accuracy, avoiding unsolicited advice, uh, trying not to sound like an encyclopedia, all these things, just really interesting to kind of see Apple's thinking as they try to shape the responses that come back from ChatGPT. Now there's also a fluid transition for pinned contact. So here's how it currently works. And here's the new fluid transition in the messages app, as you can see there, well, from what you can make out from all the blurs, <laughs> but that's not all related to message app pinning. So normally when you swipe right on a message, you can mark that message as read or unread, right? Just with a tap like that. But Apple's testing a feature that will allow you to pin your messages as well from that right swipe menu. Now the music app gets a lot of new bottom bar features. Now you might be wondering what's the bottom bar? What's this thing right here that we're really used to when minimizing the now playing UI. So this allows you to play pause, skip forward, access the now playing UI, you know, basic stuff like that. But Apple is testing an updated bottom bar with some additional controls. So here it is. The bottom bar here allows you to access your AirPlay destination simply by tapping right there. And you could choose the destination just like that. And of course you can still play and pause as well on this bottom bar, but there's a lot more than meets the eye with this bottom bar that I'm going to show you here. Uh, so of course, playing and pausing just like that. But if I tap the little up arrow, you can actually choose a destination just like that as well. So studio, bedroom, projector, those are my airplay destinations, but there's more to it than that. Notice here when I swipe on the bottom bar, I can switch between the various destinations that I control. So I can swipe over to the studio, which is my home pod or swipe over to the bedroom, which is another home pod and control those devices. I can even add additional devices, additional destinations to swipe between if I want to do that. And not just that I can do more. This updated bottom bar lets you swipe to go back and forward in your queue, just like this. So I can switch between songs just by swiping right or left to jump between the songs in my queue. It's pretty cool. And speaking of queue, there is a new queue button that you'll find here. So what this queue button lets you do, it lets you transfer a queue to a device or grab a queue from a device just like that. So ladies and gentlemen, this has been a look at some upcoming features that Apple is currently testing, whether or not these will actually make it into a final release is anyone's guess. Chances are some of these features will not, obviously the debug mode being one of them, but it gives us a glimpse as to what Apple is thinking about, what they're actually kind of working on and tweaking behind the scenes. So if you appreciate this video, let me know down below in the comments section, thumbs up to help other people know it's legit. And if you like this video, we think you might like these as well. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.